All right, let's talk about Dak Prescott, who, you know, so the news came out with Prescott that uh, it's, you know, going to be playing on the last year of his deal. There is no contract extension, so it feels like he's going to, at the very least, test free agency. It doesn't necessarily mean he will, you know, sign somewhere else. But still, that is a decision, right? Not locking him up is a decision, especially one by a lot of metrics he was coming off of his best year. He got MVP votes this year. In fact, he was actually second in MVP voting. uh, So, you know, definitely had his best season as the the voters considered him the second most valuable player this past year. Uh, However, you know, not getting re-signed. Well, to a long extension right now. Why? Let's start off with this play, which you already know what's coming probably, as this is kind of, I think, the game that might have been a big reason why he didn't get extended. He was not good in a playoff game. And we can just start off with the pick six that was kind of the the low light of the game, where you 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 see on the field how this play is supposed to work. And, you know, one of these routes, CeeDee Lamb's in the middle, usually would get open against this type of concept. When Prescott takes the snap, it is a blitz, so you have a player who's rushing in, and because of that, a safety who was kind of set up as though he's further deep is stepping up to take over that over-the-middle area, and I think Prescott, when looking there, just didn't realize that that had happened, which is a mistake that, you know, it can be made. Like, listen, a lot of players make that kind of mistake. However, you see him throw it, it gets intercepted, returned for a touchdown, and and like, listen, if this was the only mistake he made in this game, it wouldn't be that big of a deal, but he made plenty of mistakes, and in fact, he made some mistakes that didn't even end up coming back to bite them, but could have. Like, this one was another, like, just kind of, what are you doing moment by, you know, him and Lamb, really, so I'll pause it here just to set the stage. It's 27 nothing. so okay, not looking good, but you know what? If you can put seven points on the board, it feels at least a little bit better at this point. But, you know, Prescott's going to do, really just make a mistake here. Watch him on this play. He's going to throw it towards C.D. Lamb, but he throws it a bit behind, and C.D. Lamb wasn't in the end zone at that point. C.D. Lamb got tackled before he got to the goal line. There was a penalty on the play, but, you know, neither team had any timeouts at this point. So had they not gotten into the end zone, they're probably going to spike the ball with zero seconds left, and that's going to be the end of the half. So, in fact, I don't think they would get in position to spike the ball. I think they would just say, well, we didn't get it, and walk off the field. So, a little bit lucky with with that penalty, as that could have been another disaster. It was a bad game. Just, you know, long story short, it was a bad game. But he also had a lot of really good stuff throughout the course of the season. A play like this, for example, which is a man coverage play, and it's CeeDee Lamb, who, again, Lamb... That's Prescott's guy. Prescott was consistently looking Lamb's direction. You see that when Prescott takes the snap, he's going to look over in that area. Lamb doing a good job of, you know, creating separation. Quite frankly, uh, you know, Lamb was amazing this uh, past season. Was, you know, if he was left one-on-one, Prescott, you know, and him had a very good connection. As you see, Prescott does make a really good throw. And, you know, not maybe not the best defense. And, in fact, I think that is a fair criticism to put against Fields, or excuse me, against Fields. Uh, I just recorded a Justin Fields video, that's why I said that, uh, against Prescott is just a level of competition, right? I mean, you look at the, the three defenses that he went up against last year. You had the Giants, the Eagles, and the Commanders. The The Giants had the best defense out of the three. I mean, that's how tough of a situation it, it was for that division. So that definitely, you know, again, you play who you play, but that is going to impact your stats for sure. He also did have to play the AFC East, which was not an easy division defensively. But then you also got to play the uh, the NFC West, which I would say, you, you know, uh, again, not the toughest uh, division defensively to play. You know, uh, some good teams there, but the Rams and Seahawks defenses struggled last year. Cardinals was a mess. 49ers were good. But just in general, that that is a fair thing to, I think, added context in his good season. But that doesn't mean he didn't do things well. Also, something like this, where what's going to happen is, so the way this play is going to work is it's going to be, you know, a zone coverage concept. That's what Prescott is going to, you know, uh, you know, look at. However, when this play begins, Prescott does take the snap. He looks down the field, and he doesn't love what he sees. So, okay, well, what do you do in this situation if you don't love what you see? Well, again, I do think it's fair to say Prescott is not just someone who can only go where the offense goes. He has that kind of game manager tag, but you know what? To be second in MVP voting, usually you have to make other stuff happen. It can't just be, you know, throwing to the open guy. As you see, he is going to do a pretty good job at scrambling out, and he is going to pick up a good amount of yards on this play, picks up a first down. So there was a flag that brought the play back, unfortunately, for Prescott. But still, these are, again, 
benefits that he brings to the table for whichever team signs him if it's not the Dallas Cowboys. He was legitimately good last year, even when he wasn't in good situations. Yes, there was you know some good plays, like this one, which is going to be a play that's going to work. So the way it is designed is it's zone coverage. Again, this Eagles defense, not exactly spectacular last year. It's fair to say. Definitely reasonable, especially the second time they played here when the you know, uh, Eagles kind of were just in the start of their free fall where the way this is going to work is you have a tight end who's going to get into a gap of coverage. This is Ferguson. Watch how Prescott is going to take the snap. He is going to fire down the field and you see that right here, there is a pretty big window, but at the same time, like, okay, yes, this is a big window. It is no denying that big window, easier throw for Prescott at the same time though. It's like, okay, Prescott's doing things to make this window bigger, right? He's timing it at the, you know, in the perfect way. He is, you know, reading the play properly, knowing where to go with the football. Like, I think sometimes people view these things the wrong way. Prescott making the throw to Ferguson here is the correct read. It's absolutely the correct decision, and you get credits for making the correct play. I think the issue is that a lot of people look at just box score stats and then they say, oh, wow, you know, big completion, good job quarterback, even if, you know, maybe sometimes it's just an okay job, but it still is a good job, right? It's just not quite worth what the stats would give you. Prescott made the throw and they're able to pick up a big completion. Like, listen, you know, uh, the way I view Prescott is kind of the way I've always viewed Prescott is like he isn't an elite quarterback, but he's someone who's going to be a really good game manager who will make the occasional mistake and is going to give you some extra stuff in the playmaking ability as well. Like he's probably that, you know, I think at this point he is that next tier of the non-elite guys, but still very good. Can you pay a guy like that big money? Well, I don't know if you can. And again, he does kind of have a history now of, you know, he's had some bad playoff games. He has. It just, it is what it is. Nothing was as bad as the, you know, the one in, against Green Bay we just saw. That was his worst, maybe his worst game of his career up until this point. So that, that's kind of the issue. Uh, but I don't know. I am interested in it. It's a, it's an interesting dilemma. And maybe we're in a new world where we've seen Kirk Cousins now leave teams again. Uh, like maybe we're in a new world where guys are going to leave teams a little bit more frequently uh, and try to, you know, chase a little bit more money. And teams are maybe going to be more okay with saying, you know what, you're a good quarterback, but we can't win a Super Bowl with your contract, so we'll move on. I don't know, but it's interesting. That's my thoughts on Prescott and who he is as a player. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from y'all, and of course, as always, thanks for watching.